two words for Ron Paul. Thank you. Thank you for taking the cause of liberty to the American people in a way that none of us have seen in our lifetimes. And I want to make this really clear. If I thought Ron Paul was going to get the nomination, I would not be standing here before you today as the Libertarian Party candidate for president. I would have not done this. I would let Ron Paul get the nomination. And I would be along with you supporting Dr. Paul right now. that what Ron Paul has stood for is not a fluke, it's the future. That's the new ad, you can see it on YouTube. Gary Johnson, 2012, we welcome to the show, a very special welcome back to the show, Judge Jim Gray. Calling in from Charleston, South Carolina. Is that correct, Judge? That's exactly where I am. It's beautiful here, but then again, it's been beautiful in, in Boston a couple of times I've been there recently. Yes, we were very happy to see you uh, come to Boston for the Freedom Rally and the Audit the Fed and Suffolk University Normal. That was uh, quite quite a couple weekends. We're glad that uh, you were able to come out here. Well, I love Boston. In fact, I actually spent the winter at... Uh, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, when I was in the Naval Justice School. That was a long time ago, but I love the area. Boston's a great place. Awesome. We do. That's, a new, that's a new fact for yeah. us. We didn't realize that, <laughs> that you had Rhode Island roots. Oh, but, I thought you were saying it's a new fact that Boston is the best, and I was going to say, oh, yeah, no, we've that's known that new. for a we while. Already, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 uh -oh. wait a minute. Uh -oh. I'm running for national office. I can't take partisan <laughs> sides on these things. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful, too. Uh, I'm trapping you, Judge. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're, we're really excited to have you back on the show. Obviously, things are ramping up, heading into the election November 6th. We've got three weeks left. Um, how are you guys feeling? Well, you know, we're feeling exhilarated and frustrated. Uh, the exhilaration yeah. is that every time we get exposure to people, they understand what, what financial responsibility and social tolerance would be for our country. The frustration is that we've had now three of the national debates, uh, two for president, one for vice president. We were not allowed to be in them. Yeah. The next one and the last one is this coming Monday. We should have been a part of these debates if we had been. I'm still, I will always be convinced that we would have been competitive and even win the election. Absolutely. Without Absolutely. that, we're not going to win the election. I know. And it, so is that, I mean, is that the threat you feel that you pose? Why they're, why they're I mean, what are the justifications that, that, you know, people in charge of these debates are, are giving you? I mean, I'm sure that's completely bogus, but what kind of justifications are they giving you for excluding you from the debates? Well, they don't give us reasons. They have a procedure... That is, you have to be polling at 15 percent nationwide on an average of five national polls, which is unreachable under their circumstances, and they don't even right. tell you which polls they are. We've actually now filed a lawsuit in Washington to try to get the governor in the last debate saying that we actually have commissioned six polls nationally, and we say, who would you vote for, Johnson or Obama or other? And that's exactly the way they've done it with their polls. They have Romney or Obama or other. Exactly. And we've come out at forty percent on all three, all six of them. So we're going to say we've met the criteria, uh, but it's a rigged game. Yeah, but no that, matter that, what you yeah. do, the Republicans and Democrats have a lock on the Presidential Debates Commission. They're the only ones on there. It's a selfish thing to them. So no matter what you do, they're never going to invite you. We're no. going to have to pursue litigation. That, I mean, that seems so reasonable, because that does make sense. So many of the polls in the beginning were just Obama and Romney, and yeah, they're, they're going to poll at 40, you know, 30, 40 percent, and that's what you're polling when you go head-to-head -head with one candidate. Um, 
looking at these lawsuits, you, you had filed one, I believe, in California a few weeks back, and now this one for Monday night's debate. What is the status? Do they not get heard? Are the judges not hearing them? Like, why haven't we had any decision? Well, we had a bad break with regard to the antitrust lawsuit we filed in Los Angeles because it went before a judge who simply, as a matter of policy and practice, does not give hearings on expedited motions, on ex parte motions. So we simply could not get a hearing, and he wouldn't even let us file a reply to the to the opposition by the, uh, the Debates Commission. So they simply said, well, Judge, in their papers, look, there's no need for speed here. We promulgated our procedures in October 2011. They could have filed it back then. Well, of course, we couldn't respond saying we weren't even nominated until May of 2012, and actually maybe naively, but we thought we were going to meet their criteria. So they only dis- did not invite us yesterday. We filed it today. We couldn't have filed it any earlier. But one way or the other, we're going to pursue that, but it'll be after the election. And we will show publicly what the history is of this debates commission, show publicly that the legal women voters yep. literally yeah. withdrew their names, not wanting to be a part of the, quote, hoodwinking of America, unquote. Good. So it'll all happen. Great to hear that. So hopefully uh, something happens in D.C. tomorrow, on Monday, a couple of days from now. Because you, yes. we really, I mean, the, the debates to me, I've watched them all, and, and they're lacking one thing, Gary Johnson and Judge Jim Gray, you know? I mean, and, and, and I'll I, say Jill Stein, too. Yeah, absolutely. Invite Vermin Supreme. I mean, come on, seriously. They're lacking, you know what they are lacking in? Substance. Yeah. <laughs> Sincerity. Uh, honesty. Any sort of... Uh, genuine fact <laughs> i mean it's pretty embarrassing yeah, it is it's basically like american idol well, it is That's what we're describe. american <laughs> idol for politics okay you've heard me sing then no never mind <laughs> we, have, <laughs> we have heard you sing yeah <laughs> yeah maybe your musical would make it on tv but they won't let you debate yeah because you pose a threat i mean because you're you poke holes in the facade of the you know the debate system which i think it's just it's so ridiculous especially this cycle i mean i i haven't even wanted to watch them you know it's just i'm kind of boycotting them in my you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> and it's like and then everyone goes online to find out what their opinion is <laughs> afterwards like it's like that's me yeah so much the same that that's the problem right. you know the romney and obama on so many areas are simply the same we, we call them robomni you know yeah. as far as our military yeah. involving and these conflicts all around the, the world and and their the war on drugs and actually uh romney is the architect of obamacare he's not going to orphan his child it's the same all these things the patriot act the national defense authorization act so we would force them to discuss issues they simply will not discuss we haven't heard them discuss drug policy, drug prohibition yet. No, nope. they would have discussed exactly. been forced to discuss it had Governor Gary Johnson been there. They don't want to, and so they don't. It's really pretty awful. Yeah, and same with gay marriage hasn't been mentioned. All sorts of things haven't been mentioned that are are conspicuously absent. And I I appreciate you us. You know, you you would scare them. <laughs> <And> <laughs> We even found a copy of their procedures that were dictated by the Debates Commission, and one of them in the last debate was no follow-up questions. You yep. know, so you could be asked about, about Social Security, and you can say, you know, I really went to the Washington Zoo yesterday, and I thought it was gorgeous, except the way they're treating the lions, and nobody could even wait and say, I'm sorry, you didn't answer the questions. No wow. follow-up questions were allowed. That's it's just crazy. a rigged game. I know. Even the moderator said something about that, and, and she's a corporate employee of a major news network so i mean come on even even she said something about that um judge speaking of the debates jill stein and uh sherry honkala were the green party nominee president and vice president they were arrested at the last debate protesting it is there any chance that you guys would consider it i mean it's uh i just think that uh what what can people do because i mean it's so frustrating it seems like a lot of people want to protest this and take some action is there anything that you guys are planning on doing anything you recommend anything you have you know besides the lawsuits well we have taken action uh, we have told people for example what's going on and three of the supporters uh, the sponsors of the presidential debates withdrew because they didn't think it was fair either we have made a concerted effort to contact southwest airlines that is another sponsor that is not withdrawn 
expressing our outrage and expressing our support, and they've responded at least a little bit. That's where we've gone. And we also, of course, are talking to you, and we're also, of course, uh, filing these lawsuits. But And I believe in civil disobedience, but under these circumstances, I think it's demeaning for our governor, uh, the one that we want to be president of the United States, to be led away in handcuffs. I, I hear do you. not Absolutely. want that to happen. Yep. And I'm a judge. I don't want that to happen to I me don't either. either. I, don't I think want... it demeans my office. Sure. We, we can definitely respect that. I mean, totally appreciate that we agree um um i actually i have a question um about an article that just came out recently um about about your campaign and specifically about it was in salon and it's called the libertarian marijuana conspiracy to swing the election have you seen this article yet <laughs> no, i've not seen that one tell me you about haven't it. okay so basically it's talking about the fact that um li- uh there's been some robocalls going out in Colorado supporting your camp, your ticket, Gary Johnson and, and you. And this article is, is, is basically theorizing that it will push the state to Romney and help decide the election in Romney's favor because uh, pro-marijuana activists are, are obviously, a lot of them support you over Obama because of Obama's broken promises and that it's taking votes away from Obama and that it could decide the election in Romney's favor. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> you know something? If, if, if Obama loses this election, Obama will lose it. Or if Romney loses it, Romney will. Exactly. But we are standing up for what we believe. And yes, we have endorsed the initiatives to treat marijuana like alcohol in Colorado, Washington, and Oregon, because it's the right thing to do. Yes. And we're certainly expecting lots of people to vote for Governor Gary Johnson because he does stand up for the right thing. You know, it just depends which states, but we are proud of that. And, of course, if that's part of our 5 or 10 percent as well, good. But if Romney or if Obama was concerned about that, then Obama should stop this hideous yeah. war on exactly. marijuana. Absolutely. You know, still today we're having an arrest in every 38 seconds around the country for marijuana, of which 85 percent are just for possession. Yeah. He could stop that. He smoked marijuana. He even wrote about it in his book, for heaven's sake. Yeah. That's has got to stop. Yeah. So if he loses, he'll have every right to lose. Absolutely. And, Judge, uh, we have a phone call. Someone's uh, has just called in. We haven't even given out the phone number. You're that popular. People are calling in. Our telephone number, if people want to call in, is 617-606-4122. Hello, are you uh, still there, listener? We lose it? Hello? Hello. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Julia from PeterMcWilliams.org. Hey, Julia. Say hello to uh, Judge. I know you guys know Hi, each other. Hi, Judge Gray. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, Julia. How are you doing? Oh, life has never been better. But uh, <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. We, we're, our, our country is under attack. Our civil liberties and freedoms are at risk. And our economy could very well be in a shambles. So we've got a lot of work to do. Do you have a question or a comment, Julia, today? I know uh, oh, you support the campaign. Well, I just wanted to comment that I was really honored to introduce Judge Gray at a Boston Freedom Rally, and I'm really bummed because the event in T- Tennessee was canceled. But but you did get Boston, and you got a great video, too. People can check that out. You've got a couple of videos up on that, so I hope they check oh, yeah, you out. Where, where can they find that video? Actually, uh, I, I have to be careful on that video because I am seen publicly hugging Julie, uh, and I'm proud of it. But, uh, you know, Julie is a, is a great, great lady. She stands up for Peter McWilliams and his his uh, reputation and legend, really, and she stands up for lots of good things. It's great to meet people that stand up for what they believe in, and Julie is certainly one of those. Yeah, let's hear from yep. that. <laughs> well, and I feel a kinship Judge Gray, because um, he doesn't smoke cannabis either. Neither do I. So I sometimes I feel a little alone in the movement. And oh. I remember Judge Gray is just like me. So that's, that's really cool. right. Yeah, we need more people who don't smoke cannabis to be in our movement. Absolutely. Allies. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I was just last Saturday in, uh, it might as well have been at Woodstock. We were up at Monticello, <laughs> upstate New York. And they had what they called the Harvest Festival. Oh, yeah. And yep. there were a lot of people, you know, older hippies and younger hippies, and they were smoking marijuana, having a good time, great music. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever why they should not be able to do that anywhere. There wasn't any litter around. They were self-policing. 
and it was just a great thing. Now, they smoke marijuana. They're very good people. I choose not to, but if an adult wants to do that, I think the government has as much right to control what an adult puts into his body as he does what it put into his mind. It's none of their business. Absolutely. We need to attack, Absolutely. Ain't nobody's business. Not what they put into their bodies. Ain't nobody's business if you do. How yeah. about it? How about it? <laughs> Peter, we'll, we'll, hey, Nick you want Williams. to write a book about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, somebody already did. <laughs> <laughs> PeterMcWilliams.org. Thank you, Julia, for calling in today. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, and um, I love you, Judge Gray. Ah, there we Thank go. Thank you, Julia. Lots, too, lots of love on yeah. two hotheads today. This is good. We get, we have a. I know you you've only got a limited time today because you have so much so much going on with this campaign, Judge. But we have a couple more questions. Are you good? Certainly. Okay. Awesome. W- one of the questions that came up from uh, Facebook was about grow your own. A lot of people are talking about legalization, and this seems to be kind of a split in the marijuana movement in a lot of respects about regulation, what it means, how much regulation there should be. A lot of people are concerned uh, that legalization will only be in stores, will only be corporate. They want grow your own, like tomatoes, like corn, like other products that are out there, even like tobacco and alcohol, which you can you can brew your own beer at home, not tax, not regulated. Do you support grow your own, or at least that idea? Well, the idea really is that we should allow each state to decide how to address this issue. And that's what we did when we finally repealed alcohol prohibition. We did not say that Massachusetts now will serve alcohol or Nebraska or otherwise, so let them choose. In my view, if I were king of California, and you know, there's, there's a budding movement for that, but we're not quite there yet. King James doesn't quite survive. But let's treat hemp like cotton. Let's just legalize it and treat it and just forget about that. As far as marijuana is concerned, we are pursuing in California my views of where we should go, which is treat it like wine. Uh, it's not legalized, it's, but it's regulated and controlled. And then any question you're going to ask me about what if for marijuana, I'd say, well, what did we do with regard to wine? Would you have age restrictions? Yes. Can you grow your own? Yes. Can you sell it without a license? No. Same deal. Excellent. And I, for me, that's the best way to go. Well, that's what Others I like. could yep. continue to prohibit it if they wanted to. That would be their choice. But get the federal government out of it and simply have the federal government assist each state in enforcing its chosen laws. That's called the concept of federalism. You folks in Massachusetts yes. know that our country was founded on that, and we should go back to it. Absolutely. I lied. That was right a great on. answer. i got to applaud that answer. Uh, the ballot in Pennsylvania. I know you guys are on now 48 states, if, if I'm correct on this. Two states you weren't you on. You are the, correct. You weren't uh, on the ballot. We, oh, go we, ahead. The Republicans have gone around the nation and attacked our right. access to the ballots. Well, they've actually been successful in two states now. I just heard yesterday they were successful in Oklahoma. They were unsuccessful in everything else, Pennsylvania, etc. Yeah, let's talk we about Pencil- on, Pennsylvania. Not in, Michigan, they- not in Oklahoma, on 48 states plus the District of Columbia. And if we just get our 5%, we're going to be running in 2016. Governor Johnson and I, we're going to be running between now and then, talking about these issues. And uh, we will then get those federal matching funds and also be able to be on the ballots of these states without having to go through all of these hoops. So it's really critically important, historic, be the beginning of the end of the two-party system. Just rally. Your vote has never counted so much as this election for Governor Gary Johnson and Judge Jim Gray. That's it. You, yep. you, that, we've been saying that for months, and I'm so glad you guys are, uh, you know, that we're all on the same, making the same point on this, because that 5% makes so much difference. In Pennsylvania... Yeah. You you had mentioned the Republicans, weren't they? Did they pull a lot of dirty tricks? I've been looking at this, on, you know, on the internet. It seemed like a couple of people with the Republican Party pulled a lot of dirty tricks to try to really not allow you guys on the ballot when you definitely did qualify, and the judges, you know, ruled with you and said you did qualify. Is that correct? Well, yes, that and. You know, the Republicans mostly, although I don't understand it, I think we're going to probably take more votes away from Obama than Romney. But we're going to take a lot of votes away from both because literally Governor Gary Johnson is the most qualified person to be president, not only on the ballot, but anyone that I know of, probably in my lifetime. He is successful. And, you know, it isn't a question of saying what he would do, although he says good things, but he's done them in New Mexico. He will do them again. And honestly, in fact, I had a question recently at a forum Judge Gray, you're, what you say makes sense, and I think it's wonderful, but how do we know you're going to follow up? How do we know when you're elected you'll actually do it? My answer is, well, 
I was doing this for 25 years as a judge, and I'm too old to change. And you mm-hmm. know with yeah. regard to Governor Johnson, because he did do it exactly. when he was the governor yes. of New Mexico. Yep. That's what we love about you guys. Guy. He's yeah. the guy. Yeah, you guys are both the guys, because that's exactly what I love about you. you. You really do do it. You really are doing it. You're the best candidates we've ever had, third party, in my opinion, of our lifetime. And if people don't get out and vote for you, they miss the boat. Because this is, this is like, Ron Paul was another one of those guys. You two guys are exactly the same. The three of you, I just want to thank you so much for what you've done Absolutely. for us, our country, our politics, our young people. There's a reason why young people... Are, are flocking to you right now. Thank you. Well, thank you. This is an exciting time, and it's a team effort. You know, I'm going around the country working with really good people, dedicated, successful. There just aren't enough of them yet because it's a question of exposure. Help us get that word out. Send out an email or Facebook or whatever, including a link to our website, GaryJohnson2012.com. Give us your endorsement. Even if you disagree with us on an issue or two, fine. That's, that's perfectly fine, but get this word out and have your friends do the same. This is really important stuff, and I'm just really just absolutely controlled by this guy, Gary Johnson. He's just the right guy that we exactly need. So thanks for helping us get the word out. Always nice to talk with you, and let's go get them. Absolutely. Give it up for Judge Jim Gray, yeah. Gary Johnson. You know what you're getting with these guys. They are the real deal. Uh, hopefully, if you are registered, I'm, I'm saying it to all of our listeners, vote third party this time, especially, you know, in Massachusetts, get them that 5% so that next year, I mean, next election cycle, they can come around and, and be even more popular and be even more powerful. And, you know, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's the most exciting thing that's happened to me since the birth of my children. Wow. <laughs> Thanks again. Good all luck right. to us all. Thank you so Bye. much. That was great. Judge Jim Gray. Always a pleasure having him on the show. Vice presidential candidate. We made some. We covered some good ground, too, because that grow your own. That's People awesome. have been whispering about that. Yeah, that's it's true. It's like he, he gave a good answer. That was very clear. Because he's them. honest. He's, he's, he's saying clear. exactly how he feels. You can tell that's not the scripted yep. you know, type of bullshit that we've we've grown accustomed to. So don't 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 get swindled. And when we're the two hotheads where activism happens on unregularradio.com every Saturday, three thirty to five thirty Eastern time. We're doing uh, you can it. check us out on Facebook. Got a lot more coming up on the show. We're going to get yep. into the uh, Juggalos, the Insane Clown Posse. Yep. And uh, if you're listening for that, if you're a Juggalo, if you know what's going on with that, we will be covering it. Um, the guy that we just had on the phone, Judge Jim Gray, his candidacy with uh, Gary Johnson, they have actually spoken out about the Insane Clown Posse situation um, his running mate, Gary Johnson, did. And he said that it was a ridiculous use of FBI resources to be calling Juggalos a gang. So... You you know you got someone you can vote for if you're a juggalo for president and it's uh, Gary Johnson and Jim Gray who we just had had on the show. Yep, and we're uh, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll come back um, with the juggalo conversation and Alex is on his way in and we got a lot more to question talk about. With three. Question three, we'll talk about oxycontin on the front page of the Phoenix yep. and all kinds of things happening. We we yep. don't even have enough time. We should go four hours. <laughs> No. <laughs> 617-606-4122. Yeah, Heather and I, I don't know. I don't know if we'd make it. We have, we, I know. Are we still going to be friends in the middle of this debate? No, as well, long as we once stick, it gets it, to a, stick third yeah, party. Yeah. We stay third, third party, we're good. But once we go into Obama you know, and, uh, and Romney, it gets tough. We'll see. We'll see. All right. All we'll right. Be back. We'll be back. We'll be back.